Good day everyone, this is Ed. For today's video, let's solve these three crazy endgames. This is our endgame number one. As you can see, white has two pawns and a knight versus a pawn and a bishop of black. You may pause the video, how to win or checkmate black in this kind of position. You may have your five seconds or more. To analyze it more, if you're ready, let's answer this one. Knight on f6, attacking the bishop so the king cannot move. If, if blocking would move, of course, knight takes bishop, easy win for white. Bishop g6, a good square to force a draw here or still mate. Why? Because of this knight d7 move. This is the target square of white. To restrict the king to go on e5 or c5. However, the king has no squares to, to go. So black may find a insane stalemate here if white would commit a terrible blunder. Bishop takes d3. If you would capture it with your pawn, sorry draw for white. A miss win for white. So instead of you capturing the bishop with your pawn, go for a c3 check first. And let's say the king moves here on c4, there's a knight on e5. If king would go here on e4, there's a knight c5 and bishop will be captured next. Let, let's say go c5, a uh, c4, knight e5, king c5, and king easy win. For white. Let's go to our end game number two. The first move of white here is easy to find. But if you miss the continuation, it might end a draw. It, once again, if you if you want to analyze it more, you may pause the video. If you're ready, let's go. Rook f7 going to f5. That is easy to find. Why? If white queen would capture the rook, there's a knight d4, double attack or fork. Of course, black will not capture the rook. Instead, f3 to f2, check. King g, um, g1 to f1, you have to move away from the check. Knight going here, check, double attack, and the h2 pawn is forced to capture the knight. King a4. That is the plan of black. Because if um, white would capture the queen, it's a stalemate. There is no available square for the black king. So if you are white, you are winning here. How can you solve this complicated stalemate position that black is looking for? You may pause the video again if you're ready. Let's go. So the target of black here is not only looking for the stalemate, but to pressure the rook on f5. Queen takes rook, and that's easy win for black, of course. And if you are white, how can you support the rook and giving one of the pawns a chance to move? g3 to g4. This pawn is now protecting the rook, and this pawn will have to move. If because if the queen move, um, queen moves here, let's say, queen going on c7, there's a check. Queen takes, pawn takes, and that's an easy win for white. Let's go here to our end game number three. The first move, once again, is easy to find. C, uh, C6 going to C7, targeting the knight. So knight is forced to move on B7. Why? Because of this idea, if you will promote it to a queen, it's still made. Once again, the king has no square to go. So instead of you promoting it to, to a queen, promote it using a rook. And the knight cannot go anywhere. If the knight would go here, there's a check. 
and Knight will say goodbye soon. So Knight is forced to capture the pawn. Knight takes H um a5. Here, the crucial part of white. Where is the best square for white's rook? You are winning here, definitely. But if you miss the perfect square for your rook, it might end a draw. Rook versus knight would lead to a draw. But in this case, rook has a good squares to force a win. You may pause the video, and if you are ready, let's go. Rook going on c5. Of course, the knight cannot go anywhere here. That's an easy capture. If knight would go on b7, checkmate. So the king is forced to move to avoid the checkmate. However, rook versus pawn, easy win for white. 